African Union has suspended Niger from all activities of the AU nearly one month after a military coup ousted President Mohamed Bazoum. The AU has called on its member states to refrain from any action which could grant legitimacy to Niger's coup leaders. The AU has also warned against any interference in African security affairs from anyone outside the continent, including mercenaries from private military companies. Meanwhile, here in Nigeria, ECOWAS envoy General Abdusalami Abubakar says he is optimistic that diplomatic efforts will prevail in Niger. The former military leader met with President Bola Tinubu, who doubles as ECOWAS chairman, to formally present the terms given by the military hunter for the settlement of the political crisis. Niger coup leader General Abdurrahmane Chiani has proposed a three-year transition of power after meeting the ECOWAS delegation led by General Abubakar. I must say that the, our visit to Niger has been very fruitful and that, that it has opened an avenue to start talking and hopefully um, we will get somewhere. We started talking, they have, we made their own uh, points and then I made my report to the chairman of the ECOWAS heads of state and president. He will now consult with his uh, colleagues and then the, the ding dong starts and we'll get somewhere. Hopefully diplomacy will, 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 will see the better of this thing. Nobody wants to go to war, it doesn't uh, pay anybody, but then again, you know, the, uh, our leaders have said, if all fails, and I don't think all will fail, we'll get somewhere, we'll get out of this mess. Well, I am also very optimistic. Um, I was a bit disappointed when I heard that AU uh, was suspending or actually removing Niger from suspending. membership. And that was a big disappointment because I thought they would have learned from what happened uh, through ECOWAS the other day when ECOWAS decided their first uh, point of call will be a stern warning that we're ready to go to war with you if you don't do what we've asked you to do. AU should not be suspending Niger. AU should be the big daddy that is making sure that, okay, if ECOWAS was shouting for war, you will make sure that you call them to order and say, everybody, come to the table, come to Addis Ababa, or come somewhere in South Africa, and let's sit down and discuss this. Africa is in a pivotal position to do great things for the next 10, 20 years because of the number of young people on this side of the divide, on the continent of Africa. We're the big bride, we're the beautiful bride because of the number of young people. So Niger has a lot of young people, and what we should be doing is encourage the, uh, the military men who are taking over power to come to the table, have conversation, like General Abdul Salami Abu Bakr has said, they should come and have conversation. I don't think there is any other option. Fighting within the continent will only decimate the continent, will only destroy the continent, and will make it impossible for us to progress as a continent. So that's my position. I think it is absolutely essential that conversation has got to consistently be the only solution we're looking at. Jaw, jaw, and not war, war. Right. Thank you very much, Kay. Fine. So for me, I welcome the suspension by the AU on Niger. And there's a couple of reasons uh, that the AU cited. The AU said that it doesn't want any other African country to go in that line of endorsing what has happened in Niger. And we can't have a continent where we endorse pretty much coups. And when we endorse coups, it has a blowback effect. And this suspension is also part of the punitive measures already, like the sanctions. Yes, a lot of people have argued against the sanctions. That is the people that suffer the most. But also the counter-argument is Probably if those sanctions were not put in place, maybe the Nigerian coup plotters would not be talking by now. So anything to be able to make the coup plotters understand that coups are not welcome on the African continent because it has increasingly become the other of the day on the African continent and almost every leader goes on a coup and a coup binge, pretty much. And we can have this level of instability where our nations are run just by the prowess or how strong you know, the military officers are. What I don't support is a war and an invasion of the country because you know the beginning of a war, but you don't know the end. So I think this is a welcome development. But secondly, 
there's also something we should be worried about. Only yesterday, a video made the, round, made the rounds that two Antonov planes, and if you know Antonov planes, they are really big, you know, military planes and military transport planes, came in. But they didn't just come in. They came in with a certain man named Eugenie Prigogin, and they landed in Mali. They brought in weapons. The leader of Wagner is already on the African continent and is beginning to recruit people. And the dynamics have changed. And you would think that this was the same Mali that the ECOWAS tried to intervene in their matter. Simi Goita gave them some assurances. And the next thing, he reneged on those assurances. And he's continued frolicking with Russia. It should be a record that after we finally fight up all this insurgency as a result of the blowback of the Libyan crisis, the next form of battles we'll fight for the next 10, 15 years of the African continent will be remnants of Russian mercenaries, well-trained, and have access to weapons. We're already building the conflict of the next decade already with having Russian mercenaries on ground. I'll give you a point to extrapolate, to expatiate on that. Just like the Americans did with the Mujahideens. After the Cold War, the Mujahideens now became the opponents of the Americans. So we should be careful. And this is the same Mali that is pledging support to Niger. And Eugenie Progogine had the infantry to land in Mali, brought weapons in. We are losing this West African sub region. And that's why, like uh, 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 former president, uh, uh, former leader, uh, Absalom Abouka said, talks will continue with Niger. Let's set a timeline to return to democracy. Hopefully that works. And let's also put a standby force on ground. You know, because yes, I'm a vacillating man. And when I see things, and when I see dimensions to argument, I change. Because when you have a new empirical fact on ground, you have to be able to table the matter sincerely. In all of this, the force on ground that have been put in place Yes, we might not support an invasion. I don't support an invasion. But let it also be as a reminder to these Nigerians that we can't go this way on the African continent. And I am sad. And for me, this issue of Eugenie Pregogen being on ground in Mali just, you know, turns everything around and upside down for me. I want us to still dialogue, but let's also remind ourselves that we can't continue on this path on the African continent. And if we continue on this path, there's going to be problems. And I'm happy that the AU has suspended Niger, owing to when Niger will do what is right, and the conversations will be over. So for that, you know, I make my submissions. I All right, yeah, talking about Prigozhin, you're absolutely correct. And part of that statement released by the AU states that, without mentioning any names, that they would not encourage any interference by international organizations, including private military um, outfits, and obviously that's probably referring to Wagner forces. And there was a video making the rounds, um, Rufari, which you mentioned, where Prigozhin was said to have, it was, it was seen, um, saying that he was, you know, the, the, the heat was 50 degrees centigrade, although his outfits belied the fact that he was in hot climate, but the thought is that he's actually now on the African continent and there is now obvious interference by um, the Russian private military outfit, Wagner. Now, moving away from that, uh, Niger is not the first country to be suspended by the AU. So they're, in actually, they're actually in good company alongside other um, countries where there's been unconstitutional taking over in terms of um, um, taking over of power. So Mali, Burkina Faso, Guinea are currently suspended by the AU as well, or they've been suspended by the AU as well. So it's not new, and it's part of moves and efforts to ensure that, as has been emphasized a number of times with regards to Niger, the Nigerian coup, that we must protect democracy on the African continent, especially the Sahel region and West Africa, as much as possible. They have reiterated, however, that even though they are, uh, they, they are in support of ECOWAS in terms of their response and sanctions, they will investigate the impact of, an, of, a, of military action in Niger, so the socioeconomic impact, um, the impact on the, on the people before they come out with their own stance as to whether they'd be supporting a military intervention or a, mili or a um, force, um, um, 
action um, force in Niger. Also, something else that is worthy of note is that they've given Niger 15-day ultimatum. Remember that Niger initially rebuffed attempts by the AU, the United Nations, and ECOWAS for dialogue, but following hard-hitting sanctions, decided to open the door. And of course, I, I must also mention intervention and conversations with religious leaders who had gone into Niger, you know, um, to have conversations with the hunter, and they were they said they were open to conversations with ECOWAS. So that's ongoing. When we saw the um, video there with General Abdul Salami Abubakar, who said that they are making progress, he's given an update to um, the president and that dialogue is not off the table and he's optimistic. And that's the language we must keep up. We are optimistic. It seems as if ECOWAS will not accept the three-year transition period um, requested or stated by Niger. Because as we've seen in the past, look at the Nigerian coup of 1966, when a, a military will say, oh, we're going to um, transfer to, we'll transfer back to we'll transition in a number of years. It takes them multiple years afterwards. So antecedents do not give confidence in them saying three years we you know, needed. They want it done now, and they want, it, you know, they want the transition now. Also, let's not forget that President Bazoum is still, in the, is still under house arrest. So that conversation is still there. I would, it would be worthy of note to see what the Nigerians, in terms of the hunter, would do in line with that. So we're still watching. Again, pushing for dialogue. Diplomacy is the way to go. However, in the event that fails, the communication has been consistent. There might be a need to apply military, um, to apply force. Finally, I would say, the president does, should not or might not want to go to war because we have seen, again, the northern position on this because of the states along that border with um, Niger and the impact it would have on the northern states. So they have clamored and said consistently that it's almost like going to war with their brothers. So we don't want military action in Niger, but as before I had mentioned, it's also important to note that in order to pro protect the democracy on this continent, it might be, might be in the operative word, be the way to go. But we're hopeful that diplomacy and dialogue will reign. I